adopting AI and some are, are afraid that it's going to increase the social gaps, especially when you factor in worldwide, because the way that we do business, healthcare here is completely different in the UK and in Europe. What are your thoughts there about increasing the social gaps? I think it's a significant risk and there are probably two different ways we can think about it, probably many more, but the two ways that I'll talk about are one, with automating processes, we are going to put many people out of a job and that is going to expand social gaps. And when doing that, we as leaders of healthcare have to think about how do we retool our workforce as we have uh, processes that will become automated. And we've had to do this throughout human history. Um, but as we, as we learned from our keynote, the speed of progress is significantly faster right now. And so that's, that's one social gap from, from a labor perspective. But then I, I think it's significant to think about how the AI models learn and AI learns from all of that data in the internet. And we know that there are significant biases in the internet and significant biases. They're just, there's a, there's a bunch of garbage online, right? And, and AI is learning from that. And we have clear cut examples in medicine of when that is put in place as a, an algorithm that is seen as um, the way of doing care, where there are biases built in and it causes harm. And a good example of that is with chronic kidney disease and the, the calculator for estimated GFR, or the glomerular filtration rate. And it's basically an estimation of how well your kidneys work. And when that was created, there was one study that was done and there were about 170 so African-American patients in that study out of a couple of thousand. And it was determined that they saw more creatinine clearance from patients who are African-American than who were Caucasian. And there were assumptions that were made about muscle mass of black patients versus white patients. And that got put into the algorithm for estimating chronic kidney disease. And what that did over the decades that this was adopted in medicine is it caused us physicians in healthcare to diagnose black men and women with end-stage kidney disease at a much lower rate than Caucasian counterparts. And that caused black men and women to be on transplant lists at a, um, at a later stage in kidney disease. And so the medical community uh, just recently uh, got rid of race-based GFR calculations and we did that at Memorial, but recently, and if you think about the decades when this was implemented and the harm that was done, we have to be very careful as we implement AI across the board that the, the, the prevailing biases and the, the social gaps are not codified into the AI that we implement in our systems. I think Jason can follow up with this question. So from a tech side, because there is bias in the models, what do we have to do to take this into account? Because the models are being trained on this specific data and possibly making decisions that we may not want them to make. How do we handle this from an IT side? So if information security, like the weakest link is always people. If people are making the AI, people are building the data sets, people are doing everything. So it's really tough to get that pulled out of the data sets. I think we're going to have to look at something as far as the like early on in the um, in the the software development life cycle uh, to put in something to to account for this. Um, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be something that we're going to have to do upfront, but then also as the systems being trained, as we're feeding these data sets, we're also going to have to put in policies back in for what how do we report, how do we remediate, how do we you know react whenever whenever we find these uh, biases. Thank you.